Facebook tagged. No. All right. Somebody made it. <clears throat> I have enough to do with that. So because uh, we're in the fellowship hall and there's no Wi-Fi, I'm videotaping. And so uh, this will be played at a later time on Facebook and also posted on my YouTube channel. So am I, am I centered on the, uh, okay, great. Well, um, I'm gonna start off by looking at the Psalm and then I wanna talk a little bit about what's, what's in Psalm 108. And then I would like us to talk about how we may construct a prayer based on Psalm 108. And then I have our little discussion questions and everything, so I'll begin by reading the psalm. I was going to read out of the New American Standard, but because we don't have Wi-Fi, <laughs> uh, I wasn't able to access it. So uh, unfortunately, I'll be reading out of the New International Version, but uh, it, it's okay. It's, it's Psalm 108. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. God has spoken from his sanctuary. In triumph, I will parcel out Shechem and measure off the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah my scepter, Moab is my wash, wash basin. Upon Edom I toss my sandal, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God? You who have rejected us and no longer go out with our armies. Give us aid against the enemy, for the help of man is worthless. With God we will gain the victory, and he will trample down our enemies. And God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Okay, so this is it's a song of triumph in praise to the Lord's loyal love, and it was given really with the full expectation that all of his enemies will be destroyed in their own devices because David was convinced that God is going to exalt uh, and uh, subjugate the nations around Israel. Uh, so David's lifting up this praise uh, for that. And it's really, it's, it's divided into two groupings of text. The first part of it, verses 1 through 6, uh, where it's talking about David's singing this song of triumph and praise of God's great love and his remarkable faithfulness. And he's expressing his desire that God be exalted over all the earth so that his saints might be delivered. His right hand suggests his power. So the first half of it, if you remember how I talked about the Lord's Prayer is that template for how we would pray. And when the disciples asked Jesus, you know, tell us how we should pray, then Jesus said, pray like this, you know, and course it's been taken out of context and people say pray this but it's not really pray this as much as it is pray like this so the template the first part of it in, a, in its simplistic form is God is worthy you know the first half of the Lord's Prayer all focuses on the worthiness of God's praise and praising the Lord and then the second part of it is we are needy he is worthy we are needy he is worthy we are needy and it's very interesting that this psalm is divided exactly like that the first half of it is god is worthy he is worthy uh, because of his great love because of his remarkable faithfulness in other words faithfulness being to always do what you say that you will do and uh, then that expression of the desire that god be exalted all over all of the earth you know of course as God's people, it would be our heart's desire that all would recognize and, and exalt God and praise God and, and so forth. You know, and of course, the Bible says that eventually every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and all will acknowledge the, the, the superior nature of God. Uh, but the psalmist is crying out for that and then uh, recognizing that his people, God's people, are going to be delivered by and when you say that the right hand that's uh, 
Uh, it's a figure of speech for power. You know, when you talk about seated at the right hand, a lot of times they say uh, in the word it translates seated at the right hand of God, but it's actually seated at the right hand of power. You know, and of course, ultimate power, absolute sovereign power is God. And so a lot of times when they translate it that way, uh, it, but it's, it's actually when you say right hand, it's, an, it's a significance of, of power. So you see that in the first half. So he is worthy to be praised for his great love, for his faithfulness. Uh, the fact that he simply he is God and that he is to be exalted over all the earth because he is God. He is to be praised because he is the deliverer and because of he is all powerful. So those would be the prayer points that I would use for he is worthy. And then you look at the second part of it, there 7 through 13, and you see that David really was convinced that the Lord would subjugate the tribes of the earth under the foot of Israel and under the foot of Judah. And uh, he recognizes his need for God's leadership. You know, he's the king, but here he is recognizing that he is needing the, the leadership of God and he prays for help from God against his enemies and giving himself, you know, giving God full confidence that God's going to destroy them. So that's, I, I find that uh, very um, applicable. You know, here we are talking about um, all of the things that we're, that we're subjected to because of COVID-19, because of all the things that are going on and, you know, the things that are pressing down. And what it's doing is it's making us realize, man, I need God. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I cannot get through this. Uh, you know, today's another day is a great thing to say because, you know, it's like starting over and then, but turning our face to the Lord and recognizing our, our need for him to get us through things. Me, I'm, I'm the type that I want to figure it out. I want to figure it out myself. I want, to, I want to have the sense of accomplishment that I figured out the solution and I was able in my own power to execute on it. And God will remind me regularly, no, you can't. No, you can't. But that's our psalm today. So, you know, he is worthy. We are needy. And um, if y'all would, would join me, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift up a prayer based on this psalm. And then uh, I'm going to pause for a second and then we'll talk about our prayer requests and everything and we'll pray that and then uh, I have some questions that we can start having a round robin discussion about the psalm itself so let's pray father we praise you we worship you we glorify you you and you alone deserve all the glory all the honor and all the praise lord and we we praise you and thank you because of your great love, your, your limitless love, your, your agape love, your selfless love. And we praise you for that. Father, we praise you for your remarkable faithfulness. Even when we're faithless, you are faithful, Lord. You always do what you say that you will do. And you are to be exalted in all the earth, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you would use us to spread your renown and to glorify you through our lives and to honor you with our thoughts, Lord. And uh, we, we praise you and thank you, Lord, that we are going to be delivered even from the circumstances of life that we're enduring right now, Lord. We know that you are the great deliverer and that you are all powerful and your power is unlimited and that you will deliver us, Lord. We are needy, Father, and we, we thank you for your provision. We need your leadership, Lord. We need your headship. We need to recognize that your wisdom and, and your leadership, is, it transcends our humanity in such a way it's, it's infinite in, in how it does, Lord. And we just uh, acquiesce that we need you, Lord, and that apart from you, we can do nothing. And we pray for help against our enemies, Lord, whether those enemies are physical enemies or whether we recognize, as we should, that we're not really wrestling with the, the flesh and blood, but the principalities of the dark, and that this is a spiritual battle, Lord. We acquiesce that we need you. We surrender, Lord, that we need you. And we are fully confident, Lord, that you will destroy all of our enemies and that uh, you, will, you will bring us home and that we will spend eternity with you in a perfect world that has no more tears, no more suffering, no more sorrow. And we thank you and praise you in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So that's, uh, that, that's kind of how we would, we would pray the word of God, you know, letting God begin the conversation. A lot of times we come before God and we just begin to ask him for things and so forth. And 
uh, when you dive into the Word, uh, a lot of times it'll change your perspective on the way to ask for things. Uh, I know it does me. Uh, but our requests that I have uh, so far here, before we pray those, uh, we're praying for our nation. We're continuing to pray for Peggy's friend, Elkin, who was doing better last time that we heard a report. For David Beard's niece, Dawn, who is uh, suffering without a kneecap for like six months. And we're praying for Rex and Cher and Pulliam and uh, the broken hip and the caregiver in Rex. And for employment for Dustin Hall. And for uh, Chris and Nikki for Nikki and employment. I haven't heard an update there. Uh, for Bruce Ford with the bladder cancer. And uh, for Roxy, who's the caregiver to John with Luke Eriks. And for uh, Mary Ellen Brooks, uh, care caregiver to Dick Brooks. Uh, I'll give you an update on that before we pray. Uh, a couple days ago, um, uh, normally Dad's very restless uh, at night, and he's like getting up and getting, you know, you just can't keep him still. Um, and the, a couple nights ago, he didn't move at all. And so uh, about 4.30, Mom called the ambulance, which was completely mortifying to, to my mother. <laughs> She's like, and she calls him up and she says, I just want you to know that I only call 911 when it's actually an absolute emergency. <laughs> so that's how she led with, uh, with Colin. And so the ambulance came, took dad to the hospital. And uh, it was kind of crazy because um, they got him there and they got the wrong name. So, you know, we're calling and saying, uh, Richard Brooks, and they're like, we don't have a Richard Brooks here, so of course you're freaking out about that. And then, uh, you know, they don't have all of his records because, of course, the records are under Richard Brooks, and they had him under Edward, which is his middle name. And of course, they so, wouldn't let anyone go to the hospital. Yeah, of course, we, and we couldn't go, and, you know, so there, there's this back and forth thing over the couple days. And, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was an exciting couple of days. Um, so, finally... Um, my sister is, you know, a very, very strong gift of administration. So um, she's like back and forth with the hospital, with the doctors, and get everything all, all arranged and organized. Long story longer, <laughs> as I'm famous for. Um, he, his, his kidneys were down to like 22%. So he's like super kidney failure and dehydrated, everything. So he really needed to go. But they thought that he was there for diminished mental capacity, which of course, having an Alzheimer's patient in late stages, that is true. But the point was that was, he's got COPD. And so, you know, they, we wanted them to look at his lungs, but you know, of course the doctor that does that didn't get notified for a while. Um, but anyway, um, his, when they tested him, his oxygen was at 99%. And uh, they're, my sister and her husband are, my, my brother-in-law are over there picking him up right now and taking him home. Great thing is, he's been rehydrated, he's been checked over, everything's all good, he's going home. My mom, who has not had rest in Lord knows how long, back whose back was out, because she tried to lift him and t t twisted her back, uh, got a couple days rest, so I mean, and on top of that, uh, we had been struggling to try to find some people to do home care, and now they've referred over three different, uh, the, there's, there's like a physical therapist and then a, a, a day nurse and then some other person. And it's uh, presumably gonna be covered by Medicare. So, <laughs> you know, you look at circumstances of life and you think, oh, this is really bad. But you know, then on the back side of it, you're like, wow, that was a blessing all the way around. And you know, isn't that great when God does that? I mean, he doesn't have to do that, right? I mean, he could just crash everything into the rocks and we'd say, you know, well, we, we deserve worse. But, uh, you know, in, in the midst of the storm, uh, you know, the Lord persevered and, and brought us. So that's, what, that's the update for, uh, for my, my parents. We're also praying for Jerusalem and Israel. Um, continued healing for Karen Newsom, who, uh, who had COVID, uh, who's doing very well, by the way. Uh, Rita and Rosa, we're praying for them. For Lynn Hyman with Graves' disease, we're praying for them. Kids are back to school. Uh, they're over there uh, playing and having a grand old time right now. Uh, in celebration of going back to school, but we're going to be continuing to lift up all of the people that are affected by uh, this very strange back to school, uh, as we were talking about before uh, before we started here. So we'll lift that up in prayer. Um, let's see, Don Nettles with the leukemia and uh, that's under control with the hip and the heart and the blood pressure issues. Uh, Carissa and uh, baby Clara. Baby Clara is doing better. Doing she's better. 13% instead of 3. Wow. So at least she's growing. 13%. 
from but three. But she's not due till October, so. All right, well, we'll continue to lift that up. You know, you were talking about your, your dad. Mm -hmm. If he falls, I don't know, your, your, your mother Smith. may be able to call the fire department and get verified, but in Bay City, if a person falls Alzheimer's in the middle of the night, whatever, I do even call a friend or a husband, but she found the fire department will come send they a will. Picture and pick her up, pick him up, put him in bed or whatever. They will, and that's true. Um, my and mother absolutely right refuses to call 911 when my father's on the floor. Oh, okay. She'd rather him lay there for a couple of hours and, until all of us wake up and call one of us to come oh, drive over and pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, he's, he's comfortable on the floor. She makes sure. Yeah, but he's, he's clocking in at like 190 now, and uh, last time I lifted him, I tweaked my back pretty bad. So. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's going to be great to have some people coming in, mm -hmm. is, is my point. Yes. She has um, called her, she's had people come to her house at night at 3 o'clock in the morning to help Vicki get him up and things like that. She refuses to do that. She, she does the not want the, 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 the lights blaring and the sirens going to draw attention to herself, so. But um, just tell them to run asylum. Right. But, uh, and then people tra traipsing in the house, so, uh, you know, it's, it's an ordeal, so. Um, it's her issue. Yeah. can go broke when you get sick. What? Yes. Yes. Um, am I am I able to share that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, her daughter Kathy has been tested positive for COVID nineteen. Oh, really? um, but she's doing better. She's doing better. She's been sick, but she's doing much better. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm one of those like name and claim it. Right. I take my yeah, vitamins. Claim it. That's right. I just take, take care of myself and I stay healthy. Well, let's pray and uh, and lift these these requests up. Father, I I thank you that you're everywhere present and you your ears hear our prayers and we're thankful and we praise you and worship you for always being there to lend a sympathetic ear to us. Father, we lift up our nation uh, and the world really amidst this uh, COVID-19 pandemic and all of the effects that it has on people's health, uh, people's uh, mental state, anxiety, and fear, uh, their finances, on the economy, every all the impact that that's having, Lord, and uh, with all of the upheaval in our nation, Lord, that uh, the division that, that's occurring, Lord, help us uh, as the body of Christ to unite, to demonstrate to the world love, and help us to have the opportunity to share the truth of salvation by faith in Christ at a time where many may see things as being hopeless give us that opportunity lord we also left up peggy's friend elkin who's doing better we thank you for that continued healing there for david beards 
niece Dawn, who's having to operate without an ECAP for six months. We pray for uh, perseverance and patience. For Rex and Sharon Pulliam with the broken hip uh, and Rex giving the caregiver, uh, we pray that there would be uh, patience and peace and perseverance. Lift up Dustin Hall and pray for employment for him. Also for Nikki Mason for employment and uh, for her pregnancy that everything would go well and be smooth. Uh, we lift up Bruce Ford with bladder cancer, Lord, and just pray for uh, guidance and wisdom and uh, peace and healing. For Roxy, who's a caregiver to John, uh, her husband with Lou Gehrig's, we pray for patience and healing and peace. We thank you for, uh, for the outcome uh, with uh, Dick Brooks, uh, with, uh, with Mary Ellen Brooks, and that they all got a chance to get rested and uh, nursed back to health. Thank you for that. Pray for continued patience with that situation. Pray for Jerusalem and Israel, Lord, as uh, things seem to be coming together for, uh, for your plan, for, uh, for the final end of all things here. Lord, but uh, we know that you're sovereign and that uh, your timing is perfect. And whether it's uh, in the next 10 years or the next 100 years or the next 1,000 years, Lord, we know that your timing is your timing. And uh, we, we abdicate to you in that. We pray for continued healing for Karen Newsom with uh, the COVID-19. And although she's been uh, uh, cleared of that, Lord, uh, we just pray for a continued recovery there. Also lift up Rita and Rosa and their health issues, Lord, and place them in your hands. Lindheim with the Graves disease, pray for healing there. Father, as the kids go back to school amidst all of the regulations and everything that are related to uh, this virus and uh, all of the requirements that are being laid on the, the teachers and the staff, Lord, Lord, we just pray for rest and peace and patience and deliverance, Lord, and, and just... Uh, Give them strength and guidance and peace amidst all of this, Lord, and just uh, help them to turn their face to you and depend on you for uh, the sustenance that uh, they don't have within themselves. Uh, pray for Don Nettles, who is uh, suffering from leukemia, but that's under control, but he also has issues with his hip, with his heart, and with his blood pressure. We just pray for uh, healing and health there. Uh, we praise you, Lord, that uh, you're, you're answering that prayer for uh, Carissa with the baby, Clara, who's doing better and is improving. We just pray for a continued improvement and a healthy pregnancy, a healthy delivery, and uh, all would be well with mother and child. Uh, also continue to pray, Lord, for, uh, for the Christians around the world, Lord, that uh, are being persecuted at various levels. We here in America don't really know what persecution is. We feel persecuted when someone just looks at us crossways because we say we're a Christian. Uh, we don't know what it's like to have our lives threatened, Lord, but we pray for the Christians that they would be uh, faithful, that you would protect them, Lord, but, uh, but your renown would spread and that we would uh, persevere in the face of all persecution and stating that we are owned by you. Um, also pray for Doug Triggs and the travel to Montana, uh, for uh, Tyler Stringer who uh, is suffering to, uh, to pay a very high water bill because of a broken water pipe. Lift up Heidi and, and her, uh, her pregnancy and just pray for a, uh, uh, a seamless pregnancy and everything to go exactly according to plan and a safe and healthy delivery of a baby and that mother and child would be healthy. Lift up the Mathams and their finance, Lord, and just pray, Lord, that you would just uh, make provision there. Uh, and just uh, as you provide, as you fed the 5,000 with uh, five loaves and two fish, Lord, we know that your sustenance is sufficient, Lord, and we pray that uh, that would be uh, a provision in that way. Uh, we lift up Kathy, Carolyn's daughter, and uh, that she's contracted COVID, Lord, we just pray that you would heal her. Uh, that would be no long-term repercussions from the illness and uh, that the, the medication, the treatments would work and all would be well there. We praise you and thank you for all you're doing in the lives of each one of these here as we continue to look at Psalm 108. Uh, give a supernatural understanding of it. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please add Edwin, Edwin to the list. Yes, yes. We need to be praying for Edwin and Francis. Yes. 
Um, Edwin did the damage to the church. Yeah, Edwin uh, Kraft is is the person who was arrested for the vandalism and some other. Mama takes care of things like that real quick. She always has. That's part of his problem. Well, we'll uh, we'll continue to pray for him and uh, and and pray for an opportunity to uh, to minister to him because, yes. uh, as I mentioned Sunday, um, the revelation of of how all of this came about, um, our church was not attacked. This was a cry for help. This is a person who is yes. crying out for help, and uh, we need to look for ways to minister to this person in that way. And I'm, I'm very thankful that it was not an attack on our church. I, I, you know, many, many, wanted to, many wanted to think that. Many wanted to be fearful. Many wanted to, uh, on, from the flip side, wanted to stoke fear, you know, in, in, in the hearts of our members as well as the hearts of members of other churches around to say, see, things are turning south for the church. Well, it's a season of fear. You know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it is. It is a season of fear. This is such a great icebreaker question. <laughs> I like this. What do you do to relax after a long day at work? I'm not really sure how to take that. Sydney retired. <laughs> you have this cow right out the back. <laughs> I put her on it. Oh, man. As soon as I said that, okay, I hope that don't. That's a moon answer. I know. I knew. I knew that. I, I chose to use you as, as the bunt that. Uh, brunt of my joke, so you, I'm sorry. Do you for find that. that favorite chair and sit down and relax? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crochet. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that you're, you're, it, it takes your mind off mm -hmm. of off of the things you're thinking about, doesn't it? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Like you always said, an idle of mind is a devil's workshop. It is, isn't it? How often do you get time to unwind? Too much. <laughs> Wednesdays when I sit in that truck for 15 minutes when there's nobody in the, around me. <laughs> Isn't that just wonderful? It is. It's uh, peaceful. Once a week. You there before you get in the driveway, huh? Me on the lawn. On the lawnmower, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I that's a great the whole time. Oh, the way. That's I awesome. Got lots of plants. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a box checker. Um, you know this about me. So as long as there is something on my list with the, where there's a there's not a check in that box, there's just no way for me to unwind. So my my time on Sunday afternoon. I don't ever make any plans for anything and all of the boxes are checked and I can you know sit there in my recliner and just take a sigh. Did you have a long honeydew honey list? <laughs> yes, yes I do. I mean you know there's just um, you know everything I do I, I love what I do. I love what I do, so it's a, it's a blessing. It's it's not a uh, it's not an anxiety of the things that I'm doing. It's the fact that they need to be done well, and they need to be done with the right motive, with the right heart, and that's you you, you got to stay on your toes for for that, right? You know, I mean, it's very easy. To, to draw reward from what you're doing or to draw reward from the compliment you got or to draw reward from when you look at it and say, yeah, that was, 
that's my best work there, you know, and, you know, yeah, exactly. And uh, the, the enemy is very crafty, you know, and, and, and he'll, he'll catch you off guard like that, you know, if you don't watch it, so. But yeah, um, you know, back to, to, the, to the point, the unwinding for, for Pastor Doug is Sunday afternoon. So um, what, um, what kind of music would you want to have if you were marooned on a desert island? Christian, for sure. Not gospel music, yes. Gospel, Christian. KSBJ. KSBJ. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't think their signal would reach. I, I don't know, maybe they, didn't <laughs> they got that new there. app, though. Maybe uh, you know, with with five G, uh, you know, super satellite five G. I like most of the music on KNCB, except for the organ music on Saturday afternoon. Oh my gracious! <clears throat> it's so depressing. It's just depressing. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Lift up. Lift them up. They got, uh, they got, um, what do you call that when they ransom your, uh, they, they uh, somebody went in and, and stole, hey Chris, hey. And they went in and, and stole all of their, all of their data and, and they sent them a, a ransom, uh, ransomware, ransomware, yeah, they, so they got, KHCB got nailed with ransomware and they're not, they're not going to pay, they're not, so, they're, they're, not what? they're not, they're not going to pay the money, so, you know, it's, it's blackmail. Yeah, it's blackmail. It's terrorism. So yeah, keep keep them lifted up. So not island music, huh? Uh, you know, no, <laughs> I think no. island music's so happy. Isn't I, like, it? I like bluegrass. Bluegrass it awesome. also has uh, gospel mm -hmm. and traditional, and I also like sixties folk. Mm. Yeah, mm. like Peter, Paul, and Mary, Mamas and the Papas. Classic singer song. Right, yeah, yeah. Sure look like your daddy. Very relaxing. Just there you go. Just a little. What do you sure look like your daddy? Uh, you know, you've been probably stuck on a deserted island. Are you playing hard? Well, I listen to KSBJ. Yeah. Yeah. But every once in a while, I'll throw on some country just to <clears throat> relax a little bit. You know the waves crashing in. It's kind of like that white noise machine, right? Right. There you so go. that'd be that be might be enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 mean, re I really enjoy the old hymns, yeah. not with the organ particularly, but just because I listen to one of five point seven, and uh, when those when those hymns come on, my kids are like, like "Shut up! This is good. You can be listening." <laughs> Nick would listen. A lot of lot of theology. Yeah. In, in those rich. in those old hymns. So. Definitely, definitely. And it's a shame the kids don't know them. Because it's a lot to lean on when you need it. Yeah. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Yeah. We haven't done that one in a while. No, we haven't. Um, you may not know this, but actually uh, verses 1 through 5 are also in Psalm 57. And verses 6 through 13 are actually in Psalm 60. And a song. How about that? See, that's the one right. that's a good lyric. Mm -hmm. There you, you go. Use it again. Repetition, repetition. So here's a, here's a great question. And because of the way we framed this up at the beginning, I know you can answer this question. Why do you think these two segments were placed together like this? That's where God warned them. Well, that's a good answer. Because <laughs> David always did that. Jesus, lack of faith, God sovereign. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, you can't go wrong with those, those answers in, in, the, in the Bible. David story. always ends with upbeat. Right? So, remember, he is worthy. Mm -hmm. We are needy. Amen. Fits the framework of prayer. Mm -hmm. Right? It fits the framework. How can David's heart... Be so steadfast in the midst of these adverse circumstances. I mean, think think about the t you know the the timing of that. All right. So here's David. He's been anointed king, but 
Saul is still actually in power, and he's running from Saul. He's running from him. So how, how can David's heart be so steadfast in the midst of adverse circumstances? Is he escapist? In other words, an escapist is someone who presses it down and doesn't think about it. Mm -hmm. Right? You know the type, him. right? When, 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 everything, when the wheels are coming off, they, they, they press it down and they, they ignore it. And, all right, I'm going to say it. They're like Cleopatra. <laughs> They're in denial. Oh, you're so bad. All right. I'm going to use that whenever, whenever I can. <laughs> so, you know, so are they escapist? Or are they like pressing it down and, and pretending like it doesn't, it doesn't exist? Stoic? In other words, yeah, there's a lot going on there, but you can't really see it on the, on the outside. Trusting or, or blind. How can David's heart be steadfast in the midst of adverse circumstances? Is he escapist? Is he stoic? Is he trusting? Or is he just blind? He's trusting God. He's trusting God. Trusting yeah, because he says it, right? He, he, he expresses that. He expresses that. That God will be victorious. That God will be the deliverer. And he's seen it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have the faith and to continue to see God's actions just strengthen your faith. Amen. And you just answered the next question, <laughs> which so, is how, how do you explain David's growing sense of hope from, from uh, verses 10 through 13? And you just answered the question. See, you're, you're like dialed in. You're right in there. <laughs> I like it. So... What is God's part and what is David's part in the battle? What is God's part and what is David's part? The battle with Saul? Yeah, I mean, just, just his struggles in general. You know, yeah. God's training David, teaching him, preparing him as he does us. But God has a purpose with Saul as well. And, and the fact that David has to wait. Right. Good. Yeah, I mean, let, let's, let's think about David's history, all right? Remember, of course, uh, the, the people say, Bring, give us a king. Give us a king. You know, and, and of course, Samuel is like bummed out. And God's like, don't be bummed out. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. You know, of course, Samuel didn't do very, very, very well with his, with his kids. So they're looking at his kids like, you know, no, they're not going to be our judges. No. Give us a king. So what, what does God do? He gives them what they think the appearance of a king should be. Right? He's, he's handsome. He's tall. He's tall, dark, and handsome. Right? Mm -hmm. But what do we find out right there at the beginning when he's going to be named? They're like, and the next king is Saul. He's Where hiding. is he? Hiding. He's hiding. In the lake. He's hiding. He's got a low self-esteem. That wrecked him all along the way. When you see that all of the choices and the decisions that, that Saul made, he made those decisions because, because he was a person of low, low self-esteem that didn't depend on the Lord at all. You know, and ultimately there are all kinds of places. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago where he messed up but ultimately that time when he's there mustering his troops to fight against the philistines and samuel's like wait for me wait for me and i'm going to deliver the sacrifice on the seventh day and then we'll be good to go well samuel's late right and so saul offers sacrifice and then samuel shows up and goes what have you done you know and saul's like you were late you were late. The Philistines were pressing down on me. The people were scattering, so I forced myself. You know, and Sam, so Samuel says, you know, you've been foolish. And the kingdom will be ripped away from you and given to a man after God's own heart. So, you know, of course, Samuel gets, gets to go to, um, to, uh, to, to David's house. And he looks at all of the sons. And he's like, no, is there another one? And they're like, well, yeah, there is. But, you know, he's just a, he's just a kid. And he's out in the field. 
So they call and they call him in, and then Samuel was like, "Yes, this is this is the guy. This is this is the king." So he anoints him with oil, but he doesn't become king for like ten years. But look what happens though. All, all of the the events that occur, you know, he he gets some renown by by fighting against Goliath, by demonstrating his faith in God. You know, what does he he say? Who's this this Philistine dog is speaking out against you know the the God of Israel? You know, I'm, I'm going to take this guy. This guy needs to be destroyed. And he says, you come to me with, with sword and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. That's a man after God's own heart, right? But no, he's still not king, right? So what does he do? God puts him, you know, Saul gets this, this, uh, this evil spirit. And so his, he's anxious. He's, he's got anxiety a lot. So what does he do? He's like, you know, bring me a musician. So it just so happens David's a musician. He writes, he's written a lot of these psalms that are supposed to be sung to music. And so he's there playing music to Sue Saul, but what's he doing? He's watching how the king operates and how the kingdom works. So he's getting, getting to observe all of this, but still he's not king, right? Then Saul find, finds out and he's, he, Saul's trying to kill him. And finally, you know, Jonathan tells him, you know, you need to head out of here and take off. Otherwise, my dad's going to kill you. So, so here he is, but amidst all of that, he knows that God's faithful, and God says, you're going to be king. And he even gets those opportunities while they're in the wilderness. Two times he could have killed Saul. But he's like, I'm not going to lift my hand against the Lord's anointed. What kind of restraint is that? You know, where your enemy's right there, and you know he's, he's trying to kill you, you know you're named king, how easy would it have been to say, well, it, you know, looks like the Lord's provided, right? <laughs> right? So, so, you know, I mean, for, for him to, you know, for us to say David's growing sense of hope here that you see in verses 10 through 13 is a recognition of his relationship with God. You know, he, he had all that time out there in, in the fields with, with, uh, with his sheep. He's out there spending time with the Lord. How, how wonderful is that to, to get to spend all of your time just praying and praising God and talking with God and getting to know the Lord. We're so busy, mm -hmm. right? We're so caught up, we're so busy in the everydayness of our life that, that we don't get that. You know, but when, when the text says a man after God's own heart, you got to look at, at, at David and you got to look at, at, at what, what put David together. And he's flawed, right? Hello, Bathsheba, right? He's flawed. He's a guy. Nevertheless, called out. He's like, I have sinned against the Lord. And he tears his clothes. He throws dirt on his head and he, and he repents. He turn, turns away. So David, David recognizes who God is. He knows God's character. You know, and for us, in the times of despair, that's really what we need to remember, is the character of God and the faithfulness of God. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I want to spend so much time in the Psalms, is just that recurrence of talking about the circumstances that are going on, what the psalmist wrote, and what he was going through, and so forth. Because, hey, it's no different for us today, right? We're going through stuff. <laughs> we were talking about it as, as we walked in. All, all of us are, are dealing with, with crud, right? But we even still serve if, the same God. If even a Proverb 19 was to disappear off the earth tomorrow, we still have things to deal with every day. Oh, yeah, there'll be something else. There's going to be something oh, else. Oh, trust me. One of it's going to get worse. One of David's best learning challenges were the people that he had to work with in those 10 years. That's not our challenge here today, though, is it? No, but <laughs> David learned how to handle people. Right. As well as how to become king. And part of that was because he needed to know how. Yes. To work with those people that were not so nice from what the Bible says about them. See, that, you know, that tracks right with Romans 8, 28 and 29, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we know that God causes all things mm -hmm. to work for good for those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the likeness of his son. Everything, everything that's ever happened, everything that ever will happen, is designed to shape us, God's called, God's elect, into the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's that's why 
this existence is what it is. That's why it is what it is. That's why how Corey can relate to David when he's teaching. Because <laughs> he's got those it is what it is. strange little things to work with. Mm. And Connie, mm -hmm. teachers as well as students, mm -hmm. big and little. Mm -hmm. Amen. One of my favorite times of the day is all TV is so boring. And I'll get me a glass of tea or a cup of coffee and go out on the porch and sit and watch nature. Mm -hmm. You know, on the backyard looks like a jungle, but still, I, I like to watch the birds and the flowers grow and the, the butterflies and, and just say, God made this. Yep. Even the grass that we, we get aggravated at to mow every week. <laughs> You know, he made it. Mm -hmm. Amen. He made it all. Amen. Back to our question. God's part, David's part. We're getting ready to, uh, two weeks from now, we're going to look at Philippians 2.12 and, and following there. Where it, where it says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So there, there's, there's an accountability on our part to recognize that we're involved in the process of what God is doing. But we've got to acquiesce to the final product, the final outcome that, that, that belongs to God. Right, yeah. It doesn't say work for. No. It says work out. In other words, and it says your own. And as you look at that, what it's talking about is you have salvation. Now take what you've been given and serve the Lord with it. You know, it's whatever, you know, it's 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Colossians 3, 17. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do all to the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the glory of God. And so that, that's our part. Where we, where we struggle is, if you're like Pastor Doug, you have this outcome in mind, right? And it, there's end game is X. And you're working toward that end game. And then if end game it isn't exactly the way that it looked like, smelled like, tasted like, sounded like in your mind, then you get upset. You know, may, maybe maybe I'm the only one that's like that. You maybe are. that's how my can, personality. How can you set in game when God's the only one that can set it? Well, you know, I mean, there's you know, when you're goal oriented, you know, you uh, set goals. Goal -oriented. You set goals, but you can't set the goal. Goals. Yes. Well, I'm 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 speaking specifically about okay. short term okay. events. Okay. You know, like I don't I don't even know how to how to begin to to, to give you an example. can't think of one. Have you set a goal for when we can get back in the sanctuary? <laughs> okay, let me, right let me give you an example. Okay. Let me give an example. Um, when, when the Lord called me to uh, vocational ministry, mm -hmm. I was leading the sales department of a $300 million company. So I was like, you know, if there's anybody that can pastor a mega church, it's Doug Brooks. And so in my mind, that was where I was moving in the direction of. And so when it came about that I began the search, it became very clear where, where I was being called and it is completely different than the direction that I was heading. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, don't, don't tell me that when you're crocheting and you're looking to make a blanket and it's all messed up that you're not upset. Because you are. Yeah, but, but it's like all that work. You know, all that work and, it, you know, and i got to start, start over. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying, to, trying to give you a, a real-life example of, you know, because okay, usually so how, can you, how can you say that? I mean, it, I don't know. I'm, that's how I'm wired is I think about, all right, I do this and then I do this and I do this and I do this and then that happens. I feel you. So yeah. did, you, did you have a hard time changing your goal? Nope. That's good. 
Yeah, because, I mean, God's whacked me in the back of the head with a two-by-four enough times for me to realize that my way is never as good as his way. You know, I mean, it, another, another example, you know, our, our plan was to put our house on the market, and when we got an offer, <laughs> then Diane would come here and she'd get a job, and then we'd all move here, we'd buy a house. Well, we put our house in the market, small town Vero finds out and says, all right, you're out of here, and now all of a sudden we got no income, and we got a house and all these bills and no job. So, you know, I told you the story. He put me in another job that wasn't very glamorous, but it paid more than what I was making at the, at the place as, as director of sales. So, I mean, again, his plan was a better plan because not only were we able to, you know, Diane came here and got this wonderful job with this lovely company that she's still with, uh, but, but we made more and we paid for the move and we, we moved here and we, we bought a house cash and, you know, it, his plan was a better plan, but that wasn't my plan. But right? Is, you, know, you know what I'm saying? As long as you can adjust, that's all that matters. So you're task-oriented, you're goal-oriented, you set goals a lot. Go for it, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes. But isn't that a male thing? I'm a go no, no, I'm no, no, I'm a goal is from the day. <laughs> right. He just wants to make it through the day. Right? I, no, I Did you hear him? He said he was a goal-less exactly. person. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you're admitting it to everybody. <laughs> But see, like teachers, um, I've never been a teacher myself, but they have a plan of what they mm -hmm. want to teach the children and step by step to do it. Mm -hmm. And their end goal mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have to set little goals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, everybody I ever talked to years ago, the old people said, plan where you want to go a year from now. Then plan where you want <coughs> two years and five, five years. But sometimes those plans, like right. you plan to teach a lesson, and this is how you see it, but sometimes getting off that plan it's and doing what is yeah. needed is the best lesson you, as well as the kids, ever learn. Correct. So I, that's what God adjusted. does to us every day. Right. So we may have a plan, but then he guides us to get to his end goal. Right, and right. his end goal is the win goal. It's the, the win goal. goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I graduated, I mean, I, I I went to school to be a chef. Oh, really? Yeah, I was, I, and I had, I, you know, I'm very goal oriented. So I had by 23, I'm gonna have this and do, and I met your goals, and then God interrupted that. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna plan a church. I'm gonna stay at that church the rest of my life. Did it? God interrupted that, and so, but you have to go with God's interruptions because you're following His will. And you have to be surrendered to that. So if you're not surrendered to, and like David had to trust God, he knew where he was going, but he didn't know how long it would take to get there. But he had to develop a trust and watch, but he had to trust God for the, during the process. And that's the hardest thing yeah. for me. I'm like, come on, God, really? <laughs> Kids, are you kidding me? God bless you. you. Know, but I love it. And I, 20 years ago, if you said this way, I'd be like, you're out of your mind. That's not mm -hmm. happening. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool to look back on that. You know, I don't know. You know, maybe I'm like out in left field. I just can't imagine that that everyone in this room has not been disappointed because something didn't turn out the way you wanted to. Don't tell me that that that, that you have. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking. About. Some goals, are, some goals will be achieved in life, and then others were like, no way. In that direction of the goal, but then you get detoured, you know, along the way, and it's very disappointing to me. It's, God puts that there because He He we, He wants to break us and He make us humble. Yeah. So that's the hardest thing to swallow. It is kind of like God's way of backdoor to success is to fail. Or it's just steering you in a different direction. Yeah. 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 But God enjoys it. As as we um, enjoys your goal setting. As we grow closer to him, the, the quality of omnibenevolence becomes more real to us. In other words, his way is the best way, and it's not about Doug Brooks. It's not about Diane Brooks. And it's, it's not about you know, the Brooks family. It's, it's not even about Rosenberg, Texas, or it's not about 2020. 
It's about his way and every one of those events. I mean, he's a God of order, you know, and and as, as you study the word of God, you see that he, that he's very, very detailed. You know, when it when it says things like not a sparrow falls to the ground without his knowledge, he knows the hairs in your head. You know, not a leaf falls to the ground without his knowledge. What that saying is that he is all over things right down to the very minuteness of things. And when you recognize his omnibenevolence in play, then however everything turns out, you say, this is God's plan and it's to his end, end game and I'm blessed to be a part of it rather than, rather than being disappointed in, in the outcome of it. But in, but in looking at answering the question back to the question, which was, uh, what's God's part and what's David's part, we still have a part. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy when you begin to recognize the sovereignty of God to go, well, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You know, and, I, and I've heard folks that are like ultra, ultra will just throw their hands up and say, why even witness? You know, because, you know, whoever is going to come is going to come. And my answer to them is this obedience it, the bible says if you're if you're saved if you're regenerated you'll obey his commands and his commands are go make disciples you know and and, and spread the gospel so and faith comes by hearing hearing of the word of christ which is the gospel message so we get to be the vehicle for that so you know you can't just the, the work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it's god who works in you with both the will and work for his good pleasure there's there there's two there's a, an accountability that we have but we have to acquiesce to, to the results. And, you know, for being honest, sometimes that's a little more difficult than others. Yes, it is. David's a good example of, of complete acquiescence to God's plan. Mm -hmm. He had opportunity after opportunity to, to, to jank uh, the, the, the system, and he, and he said, no, God, God's in control. I think it's a good example. So how does the memory of God's provision for you in the past give you hope for the future? I'm still alive. <laughs> He's always come through. He always will. Yeah, when, you, when you experience things that where you know you're running into a brick wall and you can't see any way out of it and you just take that burden and you just say, Lord, I can't carry this. You're sovereign. Well said. And it's a lesson we learn over and over and over until we get it right. Amen. I call it arm, armor plating. You know, the more the more experiences that you encounter God where you know you see the faithfulness of God, you know, it's just one more plate of armor in your in your uh, protection and your your confidence in the future and it, it's like it's like you said it's the uh, the, the maturing the uh, the growth the spiritual growth that we experience other thoughts Well, I'll pray and we'll be dismissed. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship you in this way, Lord. And thank you for your provision, for your perfect provision. Uh, thank you for these that are gathered here, their heart and their, their sharing of uh, the thoughts on their mind, Lord. And uh, I just pray that you would just continue to draw us together in unity and just bind us together in love, Lord. And just use us uh, to, to reach out to the community and to... Uh, to the utmost parts of the earth in whatever capacity you provide us. Fill us with your spirit and empty us of ourselves. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here, y'all. There's a few new revelations on the insurance you want to hear about.